Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with a review of the Digimorpher from Power Rangers in Space. You probably thought I was going to say this from Digimon. You probably was going to be like, Digion and Remergize and all that. I just said Emergize. But this is the Silver Rangers Morpher from In Space. Um, I would love to be bringing you a review also of the Astro Morpher, as I do have it, but unfortunately it doesn't work anymore. Only the lights work, the sounds don't, which makes me really sad. But I do get to bring you the review of this. So this was, I believe, unless I'm completely blanking on another one, but at least for Power Rangers, because I don't remember if Sentai had one, this is our first cell phone morpher. If any young kids are watching out there, this is what cell phones looked like. Uh, very strange. We had antennas, seriously. Gotta boost the signal. God, I remember that time. Man, things were so much better back in my day when stuff was more, more inconvenient and less advanced. Anyway, so this was a cell phone morpher. It's pretty ugly looking, honestly. You probably could pass it off as not a cell phone morpher anymore. Um, but it's pretty basic looking. There's really not much to it. You got the primary silver paint, the black paneling here, the black button. On the back here is the codes we're going to be using for the uh, various things. You got the bike, communication, computer. This plays the Mega Ranger theme. And then the transformation. Uh, you can see the little sticker back there. It shows you all the little symbols. Um, when you press the button, this opens. Not ultra, mega. Um, it says Mega there, which is because it's Mega Ranger, that's why he used that code. I'm not sure if you can really see, but it's actually um, sort of on this translucent plastic piece, and it, it almost gives like a shadowy effect. But it's kind of neat. And then all the buttons are right here. They're actually fully pressable buttons, which is really neat. It looks like such a satellite phone, like seriously. Can you believe phones used to be like this, guys? But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. You turn it on here, it'll make this activation noise. We know we're in for a ride. So you press it open, obviously. Um, and right now, it's just in number mode. Uh, that all kind of cleared out, I guess. Um, but so, we'll just go ahead and do that first. So by pressing various combinations and then the enter button, you will get different things. Now, I don't have know these by heart, but so two. Damn it, that, that was B mode. Why did I think that would clear it out? I'm the best reviewer ever. I was just trying to get a way to uh, fix it. Anyway, uh, let's move on from me being an idiot. So... 259. Bueller. That's what it sounds like. That was a terrible impression of that guy, but that's exactly what this voice sounds like. 506. Hold on. Hello? No. Nobody there. Uh, okay. 148. Wait, that four? Yeah. Well, that's annoying. All right, now 730 will actually play a little digitized version of the Mega Ranger theme. Theme, excuse me. Alright, so that's pretty neat. You know, when I, I've got this since I was younger. I got it when it came out. So, to me, when I was younger, that was just a fun little tune that sounded actually like Pokemon music. felt like I was riding my bike. Um, but it's actually the digital version of the Mega Ranger theme. So, it's kind of neat that they kept it in there, I guess. Um, especially if you're a Mega Ranger fan. Alright, now, you press this to go to mode B. I've known this. I just, I have no idea why I saw it and thought, that's a clear button. Probably because Dawson's an idiot. So you press this to switch to B mode. Um, you can do random other codes, like... It'll just make that noise. 
But anyway, so press B mode. And now it will say the letters, and you type in Mega, so... What the hell? Alright, so that's cool. You can do it in any combination, too. Where's the super mega button? And you can press any letters again also. And it will do nothing. So we lay down some fat beats. That's getting annoying. Anyway, maybe it's just me, but I can hear it say G now, but when I was younger and even now, I can hear the G saying U. Doesn't it sound kind of like U? Like, in this context, no. No. It sounds kind of like a U to me. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Honestly, it's a pretty neat morpher. Um, aesthetically, uh, it's pretty crappy looking. It looks like an old cell phone. It's kind of unbelievable how different cell phones are now. Um, and, but, you know, this was kind of like the in-space figures were. Uh, a step in the right direction in terms of the way morphers were changing. I mean, previously it was just beeps and boops, but now we were leaning towards a lot more feature-rich things. We didn't always have it, like in the next couple series we didn't have feature-rich things, but this, I think, this and the Astromorpher were one of the first. I mean, you had different codes to put in, you could access different founds based on those codes, and uh, it had an actual voice instead of just beeps and boops. I prefer the Astromorpher voices, but this is still pretty neat. Um, so if you're a fan of the Silver Ranger, I can recommend this. It's pretty fun, and the fact that it includes the full Mega Ranger theme is pretty neat. So I have to say, despite this kind of ugly looking appearance, who knows, you may not like it and think it's retro or something, but I don't like the appearance, but despite that, I think it's a really neat morpher to have, especially if you're a fan. Uh, I can definitely recommend it. Uh, that about wraps it up. Until next time, make sure you check out the crazy podcast at writersmanagesrambles.com, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Dawson Ryder, signing off.